Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I had an opportunity to save this red oak log from being made into firewood. Um, I'm going to throw it on the mill, see what we can get out of it. Um, as you can see there on the end of it is some blue staining. Um, I cut a significant portion off of the butt because I suspected it may have had a fence in it at one time. Um, so I cut that off trying to get above the fence. This little red oak isn't without its problems. It's got uh, quite a bit of rod on it. Um, it had some weird places where the sapwood ran really deep. It had a pretty good size, like a six or eight inch uh, limb that came off of it. It also had several smaller limbs. It had a pretty significant stress crack, as you can see here on the loader and the butt of it. The stress crack in this log is actually perpendicular to the best opening face, so that's going to make it a challenge in itself. This is the butt log of the tree, so even though we've cut up a pretty good ways on it, it still has a bit of a taper to the bottom half of this log. It's about 30 inches on the large end and about 25 inches on the smaller end. We're taking a pretty thick slab cut off of this um, because of the rot. The, we need to get below the sapwood anyway. Um, and it's actually got a little bit of a crook to it and I've got the crook up or the horns up right now. so. It's the narrowest right in the middle, as you can see once I remove the slab. I'm going to go ahead and take a fletch cut off of this. I'm cutting all of this an inch and an eighth thick. Um, I'm cutting it a little thicker than I would pine or cedar or something, just because when it dries, it, it will for sure have some twist, cup, and bow in it. Um, so that'll be able to be planed out with an inch and an eight thickness. For those that are unfamiliar, there is 27 inches between the guide rollers when the throat is opened all the way up on this sawmill. And in the video you're looking at, I have it all but about three inches from open and in places I'm just clearing the log by about an inch and a half on each side. So the piece I just rolled off is at least 20 inches wide in places and probably weighs somewhere around 100 pounds. This red oak log at an average of 26 or 8 inches in diameter and eight and a half foot long weighs approximately 3,000 pounds. Um, that was one of the driving forces between me getting this hydraulic mill going and giving up the manual mill was when you get a 3,000 pound log on a mill, the friction that it has on the mill itself makes it nearly impossible for one man to turn with a cant hook by himself. You can't see it from here, but I'm going slow and easy trying to make sure that I use the log clamp to back that log back up toward the camera because it was actually trying to climb over the 12 inch tall log stops on the other side because the log is so much taller than they are. And in the middle of doing that, I saw that the log turner was trying to tear out the rotten sapwood and slip. Um, so I was just being a little extra cautious here not to damage the mill by dropping the log. The blade I'm using today is a Wood Miser Silver Tip 10 degree blade. Um, it is not fresh sharpened. It is cut two or three pine logs 
prior to starting on this oak log. The plan at the moment is to take the four slabs and probably all four fletches off and get this down to a pretty square cant and then I'll stop and change blades um, because every cut then will for sure be in a 20 inch or so thickness. This does have some obvious dirt and rocks embedded in the crevices here and there in the bark on this. I edited most of it out, but before most of the cuts, I went over it with a claw hammer and uh, cleaned up the bark pretty well where I'm making the cuts. The way the log is sitting on the mill right now, you can see that large knot in the side of it there. It's not quite parallel to the ground or vertical either one it's I tried to get it mostly parallel to the ground or sticking out the side um, but you can't really tell but the crack in the butt of the log is 90 degrees from that the slab that I'm cutting off right now looks like it's pretty thick but if you look at the log after I've cut it there's almost continuous sapwood on the butt end of it so we've got spots with lots of sapwood we've got this large knot on the side um, which you know is kind of unusual for a butt log on, especially on something this big unless it's a yard tree um, and then we've got the stress crack, um, and it's pretty significant. And we've also got the blue staining, and they're all uh, oriented about 90 degrees apart from each other. So to say here's the best opening face, there, there really is no best opening face on this log. For anybody that doesn't know, the blue staining that I'm referring to in oak especially, um, it corrodes metal and causes a chemical reaction that causes a blue color in the wood. Um, that can travel way up, especially a red oak, um, because of the way its open cell pores are. Um, so there could have been a nail down low in the stump and it could have blue stain run nearly all the way through this log. The blue staining won't affect being able to saw it, but it will affect the quality of the lumber that we get out of this log. Here you see me breaking up some of the bark on this to, uh, access the dirt that's hidden underneath it uh, because there was some voids underneath some of the bark. When I was bucking this down to size out in the yard uh, with the chainsaw, I seen sparks come off of the chain a couple of times. I was concerned that it was metal then, but in hindsight, I believe it was just all the dirt that was embedded in the bark on the log. As you can tell, the cut's going pretty slow. This is a pretty wide cut and fairly solid material and uh, this blade has gotten a bit duller since we've started already um, so the, the cuts going pretty slow at this point I'm just trying to get these four slabs knocked off get her squared up and we'll get a brand new blade on there and be ripping and running
Hey, now would be a really great time to like and subscribe. Look at how thick the sapwood runs on the top end of this fletch cut. It's got to be six or eight inches in places. This log is about the biggest that I've had on the mill, for sure the biggest hardwood I've had on the mill. Um, for those of you that are familiar, that log clamp is extended all the way. I think it comes up 12 or 13 above the uh, log bunk. So right there, that cut is at least 24 inches off of the log bunks. Um, and I believe it was narrowed down to 18 in the other direction at this point. I'm pretty sure the face that is looking at the camera right there is what I would consider the best face on the log. As you can see, there's a couple of small knots on it. Before we saw down very far, we'll get into that large knot on the side there. Um, and we are perpendicular to the stress crack. We're gonna go ahead and saw one more fletch cut off of this. That'll get us down where we're in more of the heartwood Get rid of some more of this sapwood, which most of it is either rotten, gone, or doty. Um, so just bear with this. This little bit slow of cutting because this blade's getting fairly dull. Um, you know, if I was cutting something five or six inches wide, we could still be going at a pretty good rate. But cutting 18 inches wide, it's it's pretty slow unless that blade's good and sharp. As you can see, I've turned the water up quite a bit. I'm trying to make sure that uh, we keep that dull blade cooled off um, so we maintain a straight cut. All right, I've got the mill cleared off now. I moved the head to the back end, the tail end of the mill, which makes better access to putting the new blade on. I'm putting another wood miser 10 degree blade on here. Um, we'll get it on and get back to sawing.
Well, here you can see that stress crack in the end of the cant I'm sawing parallel with it. So it, it's horizontal and the blade's horizontal, so I'll be able to saw down close to it. Um, trouble is, before I get there, I'm going to get right into that uh, blue staining. You may notice that in places on the video, the log is covered with sawdust and then it's not. I've intentionally cleaned in the cant up every time I make a cut and editing that out. I'm doing that for the sole purpose of the video so everybody that's watching can see the grain in the wood better because, um, you know, without it you can't really tell much about what we're cutting. Normally I wait till I've got uh, the whole log completely cut up and the saw shut down and then I clean all the boards up and air stack them. Everybody sees that blue stain on the end of the log. Here I am cutting down through here so everybody be listening to see if you can hear anything. I'm going to turn the sound on the sawmill back up. I went over this log with a metal detector before I brought it in the building, but we have cut down probably seven inches from the bark where we've used the best metal detector known, which is a saw blade. So this was a brand new blade, so you can see how good it was cutting to the right side of the screen and the washboard on the left side of the screen. If you're not familiar, that's because that piece of metal messed up the set in the blade and uh, dulled it extremely as well. Looks like a 16 penny common nail to me. Well at least I'm staying in practice changing blades. You can see some of these teeth are considerably more hook shaped than they should be. Um, they're damaged pretty significantly. Typically a piece of metal like a nail hit uh, perpendicular to it will uh, just mess up about two to three feet of the blade depending on the speed that you're traveling. The side that we were cutting on, that was going to be my final cut. So if, if we could have made it just, if that nail had been another half inch deeper in the log, we would have got off of that side before we hit it. Uh, the reason I was stopping was you can see that blue stain coming up. And then uh, juvenile wood is wandering through the, log so you in the middle there you can actually see the juvenile wood coming out on that cut here we're making a very shallow cut just to clean up the top of this cant. Um, the first time we rolled this log, um, evidently I didn't get it perfectly 90 degrees, so it's about 3 sixteenths off. And then to top that off, the dull blade wandered just a little bit. 
so it goes from a quarter to our three sixteenths to a little over a quarter in places so this blade's good and sharp and we're going to clean this up and get a good flat start The side of the log that we're cutting on now isn't too bad. It's got a few small knots in it. The biggest problem with it is we're perpendicular to that stress crack. If you're not familiar, stress in the log causes it to crack after it's cut. And once we cut a board with that crack in it, that stress when it dries is going to continue to crack that board open and it can rip the board long ways plumbing too. So I decided to go back to the face that we were cutting on even though it's got the blue stain in it and a fair size little knot. Um, we're gonna cut a few boards off of it and get down to the juvenile wood and quit on that side completely. So with a little video editing magic, we've get taken three more inch and an eighth cuts off of the side with the blue stain. Those are 14 inches wide, those boards coming off of there. So they will be able to be edged up and cleaned up and get rid of the blue stain and some of the other defects in them and still have some pretty nice lumber out of it. So if I stop on this face right here, I'm going to be cutting perpendicular to that stress crack again. So I'm going to go ahead and roll another 90 degrees. This face is pretty clean face with the exception of it's got a lot of sapwood in it. With a bit more of that video editing, we're going to get four more boards off of this side. So that peculiar dark spot in the middle of that cant is some more of that the juvenile wood wandering through the cant. So we're going to have to about call that done on this side of that log. So this is what we're left with from this log. It's a 13 by 4 and a quarter inch uh, cant that has got the juvenile wood running all through it so there's really nothing left we can take off of this we might could have got a one by four off of each side of it um, but I don't think so because of that stress crack that's in the log it is running up and down with the hand through the center of it so I'm just cutting it into three equal pieces that uh, we can use this dunnage in the yard. I 
I don't show all of the fletch cuts being edged, but here's a few of them. The board foot total out of this log wasn't nearly as good as I anticipated it being, or I put it on the mill, um, between that blue stain and the stress crack. The stress crack caused us to have to abandon the cant when it was still four by 13, where we should have been able to get some, uh, several one by fours off of it, at least four more, where we could have got it down to say a four by five or something along those lines. So next comes cleaning up and stacking the lumber. Um, I try not to bend my back any more than possible, so I'm bringing it off of the sawmill onto the forks of the tractor, cleaning it up, and then dragging it right over onto some saw horses, um, stickering it every 20 inches or so, uh, starting about five inches off of each end and about 20 inches apart. Um, and I stack as many layers, which is usually three to four, depending on the thickness and how much water's in the lumber. Um, and then I move that with the tractor outside to dry. Here's one of the better boards out of that log. It's an 18 inch wide, of course, inch and eight thick and eight and a half foot long. Uh, we're going to throw some water on it and see what it looks like with uh, grain exposed. That's a pretty good looking board. Hey, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Leave a comment below if you want to. I'll try to respond.